This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Ramika Vincent Leary and welcome to this edition of Pensacola State Today. Workforce programs are in high demand. In fact, obtaining the necessary training may not take as long as you think. At Pensacola State College, we'll be with you every step of the way from the classroom experience to fulfilling your dreams in the workforce. The possibilities are endless. So during this segment, we'll focus on our new truck driver training facility. To discuss this further, I'm happy to welcome Dr. Ed Meadows, President of Pensacola State College, and Michael Listow, Director of Workforce Education. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. As we know, Dr. Meadows, there is a huge truck driver shortage all around. So for you, I know this groundbreaking that we had in September had a little bit of extra meaning, didn't it? Certainly, Dr. Larry. Um, you know, it, it takes uh, a lot of different uh, good things coming together to uh, create a facility like this. And so we had uh, a, a large number of partners uh, that helped uh, us uh, achieve uh, the dream of being in the industrial park as the industrial Living the tenant. Dream. <laughs> so we're very happy about, uh, you know, partnering with uh, Triumph Gulf Coast, uh, Santa Rosa County Economic Development as well as the county commissioner uh, com commission in Santa Rosa County and uh, the U.S. government uh, with the Department of Commerce and also the governor's office that actually launched us uh, with a job growth uh, grant that got us our first truck. And then I can't forget the Lewis Bear Company who also donated a truck uh, to help us with uh, launching our truck driver training program. But this new facility will be state of the art We'll be able to do testing as well as the uh, long-term over-the-haul, over-the-road uh, uh, licensure and then also uh, short-haul and passenger uh, CDLs. Now, I must say you're very nifty with a shovel. <laughs> I did see the picture of you from the groundbreaking with a lot of these partners. It was just phenomenal. And, Mike, I'm going to speak with you regarding how long this program has been in existence. Not too long, right? No, it's still a relatively new program for us, um, but it, it was again um, brought from just the need um, to have people, you know, enter this career. And we've all experienced shortages that have been brought on by the pandemic as well as other challenges, and we're doing the job of filling that need. And, and I'm extremely proud of the program and of the college for doing that. Um, now, the program itself was started as non-credit um, around 2019. Okay. And then we've continued to increase our capacity um, and, and the facility will allow us to further increase that capacity in, in meeting the um, job demands that are currently out there. Well, I hear we're on a 10 month track mm -hmm. to completion and I know you're really thrilled about that. The specific location, can you tell our viewers where it's going to be? So it's in East Milton, um, Santa Rosa County Industrial Park. Um, and it's 87, right, Dr. Meadows, off 87? Yes. Um, so it's, and, and again, everything is going to be designed um, for this program. So we're going to have state-of-the-art equipment, including truck driving simulators, um, a driving loop, as well as um, state-of-the-art classrooms so that we can um, train people and, and increase capacity. Now tell us a little bit about the two trailer trucks that were donated. Dr. Meadows, you alluded to that a little bit earlier, but this is huge. Mm -hmm. They're not cheap, are they? They're not. Um, and, and that's one thing as we've really built this program is the amount of support um, that we've gotten from business, from the community. Um, you know, the, the tractor trailer combinations are not cheap. Um, and the fact that, you know, one of our um, partners in the community, Lewis Bear, was able to come forward and make that donation was, was very significant to us help, uh, getting started. We'll get back to you in just a moment. So, Dr. Meadows, with your connections in the community, I know that you spoke about the partners previously, but what was the catalyst that actually made all this possible 
the idea. Who was the brainchild behind that? Well, you know, the, uh, the, um, the mission of the institution is um, high quality, affordability, and access. And so the, uh, the college is responsible for constantly scanning the horizon for uh, new uh, workforce needs. And uh, the national shortage has been publicized uh, over and over uh, in terms of uh, truck driver training. So it, it was uh, no one person uh, that thought, gee, let's think of, let's have a truck driver training program. It, it's something that surfaced as a result of uh, the workforce need as it does with other programs. And, and talking about local partners, we didn't have a place for our students to, to practice. So NAS stepped forward okay. with uh, providing uh, Bronson Field, which is the old landing strip. And that, that, uh, that provided us a space um, off the roads to actually allow students to practice. And it's my understanding that a lot of other community uh, agencies use that as well to practice, such as uh, our law enforcement. So uh, we share that um, currently uh, with other agencies uh, just uh, west of Pensacola off of 90. The industrial park uh, that Michael was referring to uh, is uh, actually off of 90. Okay. Um, just to, just past, and it's called the Industrial Park East, and it's just past the main Industrial Park entryway uh, off of 90. But uh, yes, indeed, it does take a lot of partners, and uh, one thing we're, we're looking for is we're looking for uh, trucking companies to step forward now that we're publicized our new location and our ability to test, and we would love to partner with the um, uh, trucking industry to uh, help train their future truckers. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, is uh, not uncommon in the world of truck driver training is to have uh, special contracts with companies that need uh, truck drivers. All right, and you heard that viewer, so chime in please with Dr. Meadows if you will. Now, Mike, we know that there are so many success stories coming out of this brand new program. Why don't you share one with us mm -hmm. quickly? Just one. I um, know, right? Um, <laughs> There's so many. Well, and you know, again, I think with just to add quickly to Dr. Meadows' points about um, building the program is is our program really it's it's the right program. It's it's affordable to people, um, and it's the right way to do things. And I think in attracting the students that we've currently have, um, mm. we've seen that. And there's. Two particular um, stories that I have. I know you said one, um, but we've had a homeless student okay. that that is literally living out of uh, his van. Um, we've been able to get him licensed, um, as well as connecting him to community resources that we have as as a college to to help him. Um, he's currently employed, as well as we've had um, a mother daughter team, or actually a mother son team that have gone through the program um, and they have aspirations of starting their own business. So I mean those are just two stories um, but really um, you know for people that have gone through the sky's the limit as far as what they want to do. And how long would it take a person to complete the program? Uh, right now we're running um, eight weeks um, with plans to even make that shorter. Um, we're going to be building, again, with the new facility as well, our ability to offer customized training. So let's say that there is an employer um, or a business that wants, you know, their specific group trained or the, their specific endorsement trained, we will offer that. Um, so again, we're going to continue to increase our capacity. Thanks to both of you. Sit tight, okay? Folks, as we head to break, remember to log on to PensacolaState.edu to explore all of our workforce programs. Stay tuned, we'll be back right after this. Hello everyone, during this segment, we're shifting gears, focusing on other workforce programs that are quite popular culinary and hospitality, and building construction trades. We might even have a few surprises. To expand on this, we're happy to welcome back Dr. Ed Meadows and Michael Listow. Let's keep this conversation flowing. Now, Mike, I'm going to start with you. 
culinary and hospitality, can you distinguish between the two? Because sometimes people try to maybe group them together. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, there certainly is overlap between mm -hmm. the programs. I mean, they, they work together. Um, but the culinary um, side of it is going to be really, you know, focused on working um, in a restaurant in either the front of the house or the back of the house. Um, we've had students, though, that, you know, outside of restaurants have been able to start their own food trucks or, uh, you know, different endeavors that they might have. But now the hospitality side of things, that's going to be more for, like, hotel um, management as well as maybe, um, you know, uh, event planning. Okay. Um, so it, there certainly is overlap between the programs. I like that. Dr. Meadows, you are such a busy man. <laughs> Let's talk about Molly McGuire's. We here at PSC know quite a bit about it, but for our viewers who don't, will you explain? Well, of course, uh, the uh, Molly McGuire Endowed Scholarship, um, the goal is a half million dollar endowed scholarship to uh, support uh, culinary students. Uh, and uh, this was uh, through the generosity of uh, Martin uh, McGuire Martin, who is the uh, the owner of uh, Flounders and McGuire's and several other restaurants, but uh, this scholarship um, is extremely important because uh, you don't think about um, the kinds of things that students need, but uh, they're actually in uniform. They have to. They need the special shoes and um, the uh, aprons, uh, equipment like knives. Uh, that uh, are necessary in a kitchen setting. Uh, but to follow up with what Michael was talking about, uh, a lot of the overlap may be that uh, these students have opportunities to work in resorts, uh, either in the culinary arts or in the hospitality management, uh, or they uh, uh, work in um, bakery shops. Uh, and um, the other thing that a lot of our students are interested in is, uh, is catering. So uh, a lot of the um, restaurants actually do both. They both cater and they also serve uh, in-house. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's an immediate impact type yes. of employment because of our uh, tourism industry. And so when you couple that with some of the other workforce programs like uh, cosmetic arts, uh, you know, you have a lot of our students that want to open their own uh, uh, cosmetic uh, shop uh, or spa. Uh, so we teach a lot of uh, things like microdermabrasion abrasion and nail technology Popular, right. as well as hairstyling. Okay. And we have a barbering <laughs> program as well. So uh, all of those things cater uh, in an immediate impact in supporting the tourism industry in Northwest Florida. That's amazing. And the interesting thing, Mike, doesn't really take too long to complete the programs he just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. So on average, about how much time would you say roughly? Well, I think uh, depending on the program, yes. we have options for people. We can have programs that can be a semester, um, a year or less, okay. or even up to a two-year associates. Um, you know, with what Dr. Meadows was saying about um, them being in uniform, all of our programs simulate actual job type environments and we do that um, in providing services to the community as well. So our culinary and hospitality, um, we do a lunch and dinner series as well as in our cosmetic arts programs we provide uh, haircuts to the communities as well as uh, participation in various community events such as um, veteran stand down where we're providing haircuts to veterans. Um, you know, so it's again, I think, uh, simulating real um, job skills, you know, when That's they're with wonderful. us so that they can immediately transition into a position in the workforce. And what we want is a lot of people to transition over here to Pensacola State College and start a lot of these programs, right, Dr. Meadows? That's exactly right. It's, it's all about finding uh, people for the workforce, and right now uh, we're. Uh, we're in a critical shortage in all aspects of the workforce, uh, whether you're talking about uh, construction science or cosmetic arts or whether you're talking about culinary and hospitality management and even in the healthcare sciences area that we'll be speaking about later, uh, huge shortages uh, of, uh, of skilled workers. That is so true. 
We know one of the biggest hits here at the college and in the community, the culinary lunch dinner series. And for those who don't want to sit down and eat, they can order some takeout. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, and that's, that's, you know, that idea too, that just to give a little bit of history on it, came really from the challenges associated with um, COVID and, yes. and the pandemic over the past years. The faculty said, well, how can we still um, provide these hands-on type experiences um, for students and, and do it safely? And, and that was the idea they came up with, um, was to do not only like we're currently doing the lunch and dinner series, but also a take-home option um, where people can um, take a, a pre-prepared meal home, um, essentially warm it up mm -hmm. and, and have a Good great dinner with their families. <laughs> so I love that idea. So something happened recently, American Culinary Federation accreditation, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, it's, you know, it just recognizes training programs um, that um, we had an external group of people come and, and walk through our program, review our curriculum, review our faculty, um, and they said that we're doing a really good job um, in, in giving us this endorsement. Additionally, it's additional certifications that students can list on their resumes um, when they're applying for jobs. So that's, and, and I'll just kind of say, in all workforce programs, we do try to build in either various accreditations, um, as well as industry credentials that are recognized by um, employers, and ACF is no different. Spectacular. Dr. Meadows, I know you hear from students, and do you have maybe just a little something you'd like to add? Maybe someone who has graduated from culinary hospitality, maybe come to you and say, hey, Dr. Meadows, I'm now working at this big resort. Let me tell you how I'm doing. Well, we had uh, a few years back, we had a young lady that had uh, dual uh, citizenship in Japan and America as well, and she was here in our culinary program. And uh, her, her goal was to go back home and have a bed and breakfast at the foot of Mount Fuji. And uh, she, uh, she came to me because there was a, um, a course that required her to, um, uh, for graduation, one course. But she had taken other courses and we were able to work out a substitute course in general education for her because she had a timeline to yes. start her business and her loan application. So, um, you know, uh, I, w I would love to think that she actually has that bed and breakfast and one day I might actually get to go and... Uh, Put that on your bucket list. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but uh, such, a, such a sweet person. But uh, so we don't have... Um, many foreign students in our culinary program, but she found her way through us through a vacation that her uh, parents brought her to Pensacola and uh, for, for vacation and she found this school and she said, my goodness, I'm, I got dual place. citizenship, so I'm staying, I'm gonna get the degree and I'm gonna go back home. All right, wonderful story. Many thanks to both of you. Such great information that you shared. As we head to break, we want to share some reminiscent images from our culinary and hospitality program. Stay tuned, we'll be back right after this. Hello everyone, during this segment, we'll be highlighting several of our healthcare programs. I must say there are some innovative developments and I'm excited. And to expand on this, we're happy to welcome Dr. Dusty Sluter, Dean of Health Sciences. She's joined by Dr. Mitzi Sowell, Department Head of Health Sciences. Remember Dr. Sowell when I said exciting things? 
we have a brand new immersive technology room. I'm very, very happy about that. So why don't you tell us about it? It really sounds innovative. We're very happy about it as well. Um, it really immerses the student and puts them into the scene. Um, the scene can change from a wreck to an emergency room, an ambulance, a maternity ward. Um, and the way that's done is there are th uh, four projectors. They project on each wall and the floor. So you get the entire scene around the student. And you can switch from scene to scene with these things called hot spots. So it's actually interactive to where you touch the wall and the scene will go from one scene to the next. So for example, in one of these rooms, let's just say hypothetically somebody needs CPR and the student is there. Can they actually, through this technology, perform the CPR well, one of the ways you can, because one of the ways that we do that is using our different mannequins, our different simulated mannequins. Um, we have a device called Lucas, which actually um, is used in the EMS field. To uh, it actually does the compressions in the correct time at the correct depth. So we could use that with the mannequin inside that room, and you could you could put the scene of a wreck on the walls to where cars are going by horns are honking, you hear an ambulance. So you're not just doing those, you're not just training for those in a controlled environment. It really puts you into the scene. Now one thing interesting you told me in the green room was that this immersion technology room can be used for other programs of study. So really it's not particularly program specific. It can be used for anything. Um, there are underwater scenes, there are firework scenes to where when you touch the wall, the walls light up with fireworks. You can actually embed quizzes to where you could have a question pop up and different questions on the wall and the student would have to touch the wall and it would tell them whether or not the answer was correct. You can put voice in to where mm -hmm. the student could touch the wall, touch an icon or a hotspot and you could have um, some sort of uh, where you're giving um, the student respirations, breathing, you know, heart rate, those sort of things. So it's really endless of what you can do. That is so amazing. Dr. Sluter, nursing is one of the most popular programs here at PSC. What innovative things are happening in that program? Well, again, we um, the simulation center that nursing um, utilizes to practice their skills and um, um, be prepared for the real life um, nursing profession. Our simulation center opened in 2006 and since then we have maintained it and really enhanced it throughout the years with um, donors and from the community and from um, federal aid money. But we have a very realistic mock hospital that not only the nursing students learn uh, real life uh, scenarios, but also the other health programs such as EMS and um, medical assisting, phlebotomy. There's a lot of a lot of different health programs that utilize that simulation center. So, just out of curiosity, with simulation center, do you have any mannequins, for example, that can actually birth a child? Oh yes. Would that be yes. one? Yes. Um, <laughs> just thinking. It is, it is a fabulous. Uh, uh, center to have because we want every student in each of those health programs that are experiencing that simulation scenario to experience that session and so to provide consistency with these students and what they're learning we um, do have uh, several patients, mannequins if you will, that uh, replicate real life experiences such as um, deliveries, mother uh, deliveries, uh, cesarean, um, um, postpartum, we have mental health scenarios, critical care, pediatrics, and so it's very nice to have those simulation scenarios so we are, can assure that each student has the opportunity to witness such a session that they may not be able to witness out in the real life uh, clinical setting. Love that hands-on approach. So Dr. Sowell, Tom Mannequin, now tell us what the acronym TOM stands for. TOM stands for Tactical Operation 
medical. And so it is a mannequin that is really realistic to the human body. It's very rugged. It can withstand 6,000 pounds of pressure, which means it could be under something to where you have to get this mannequin out. It's plumbed with the uh, um, blood vessels, and so it can actually bleed. It can hold 1.2 gallons of um, blood, fake blood. Um, and then it also responds realistically to whatever the responder is doing. So if the responder, you know, in, in a different setting, they could state, I'm putting on a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. But in this situation, they put on the tourniquet and it may not stop the bleeding. If they didn't do it correctly, it would continue to um, bleed. So this particular mannequin can bleed, it can breathe. There are different models, and the one that we have is a gunshot wound. It has a gunshot wound that is packable. It has entry and exit wounds. Um, it has breath sounds. The instructor can speak through the mannequin in um, English, also Spanish, and there are other um, languages available that you can get. So it's, it's really like working on a human. I need to come check that out myself. <laughs> Dr. Sluter, back to you. Let's talk about emergency medical services, EMS. So our EMS programs are very popular and it's a, um, we offer several programs, several types of programs. An EMT program, which is our one semester um, program, we offer that every semester. And our paramedic program, and, and then we have our associate degree in EMS. Um, again, all very popular programs, our paramedic program, those students that um, wish to continue their career in um, healthcare can um, streamline into our nursing program and, and have a dual um, um, credential with paramedic and nursing. And the availability of scholarships, because we know there are scholarships out there and we need people to apply for them. So Dr. Sluter, why is it so important for people to harness that? Yeah, some of these students, um, majority of these students actually are second uh, career type students. And so they're coming back to the education um, world with already having families and maybe having to have a part-time job. And so we depend on the scholarships and we have received um, um, many scholarships within the community. Um, Josephine and Bill Jones uh, just awarded nursing program a $250,000 endowed scholarship, which is, is very beneficial to the students. It really helps the student focus on their education and, and allow them to be successful in the program. Ladies, we're going to have to have both of you back on the show. Such a wealth of knowledge between the two of you. I tell you what, I'm excited, so please explore these awesome programs. Folks, this has been such a rewarding show, and I want to thank all of our guests for joining us. As a final reminder, log on to PensacolaState.edu to find out more about our numerous workforce programs. I'm Ramika Vincent Leary. Thanks for watching, and remember to keep it locked in right here on WSRE PBS for the Gulf Coast.